Uh, this is the ARM-1 attached to Asteroid. Let me get the name right. It is OMC-347, and this has been in orbit about the moon well for quite some time, and the plan today is going to be to begin. Eventually, I want to have a whole station kind of attached to this asteroid, uh, similar in function to Minmus Station, uh, where I can attach ships and landers and get down to the surface, eventually have a moon base, and start harvesting more of the science and perhaps actual real harvesting uh, resources as well off of the moon. Uh, but we need to do some things with this asteroid. Basically, I got this here. Uh, I did bring some Kerbals out here once when we did an asteroid sample, and then basically it sat here the whole time. And it is in a pretty wacky orbit here. You can see it's fairly inclined. Not only is it inclined, if you take a look at the inclination, the inclination is 162 degrees. It is a retrograde orbit. It's going around backwards. What I want to do is put this thing into a polar orbit. A polar orbit for a station uh, about Mimis or the moon or whatever is really handy because you can put a lander on it and eventually as the moon rotates uh, it, every spot on the moon will go under the orbit and you can land in whatever biome you want to be land in. You just gotta wait for uh, the appropriate landing zone to rotate underneath your orbit. But with 508 meters per second left in this vehicle, it doesn't quite have the Delta V, I think, to make a good plane change. Uh, but we are going to do some things with it. What I want to do is, if I take a look at my science archive, this is coming from Kerbalism, and I take a look at asteroid sample, I got an asteroid sample in space low. For some reason, I only got half of it. I'm not exactly sure what that's about. But... If I just take this asteroid and move it into space high, I can do another asteroid sample and collect uh, some more science that way. And right now this thing is in, what is it, about a 50 by 50 orbit. And the moon, uh, high space, is at 60 kilometers. And actually that reminds me, I wanted to show a mod that got mentioned to me um, over the weekend on the Discord. It got mentioned uh, and it's called uh, Planet Info Plus. If I, like for instance here, I'm on map view and I'm in the moon. And when you're in map view or whether you're in uh, the tracking station, you get this little info button. This info button is stock. Um, but if I focus this on the moon and click on info, it's telling me information about the moon. But underneath here, it tells me information about the orbit, physical parameters about the moon. We have physical characteristic, atmosphere, and then gameplay. And if I start to open these up, there are things here that are not in stock. Um, I can't remember which ones here are uh, stock and which ones here are not. But I know, for instance, SOI, the height of the SOI, I don't think is stock. Um, the max elevation, which is also always handy to know is not stock. If I go over to the gameplay tab here, it's telling me that I've explored five out of the 17 biomes on the moon. That's not stock. It's telling me to get from near space to far space. The boundary line is 60 kilometers. That's not stock. This is all being provided by this Planetary Info Plus mod, and I really like the way they integrated it into the stock tools. And by the way, this information is customizable. If I open up my settings here, and just go to just, I'm not gonna adjust too much, but under here, Planetary Info Plus, you can toggle on and off a whole variety of different ones. So I toggled on the ones that, for me personally, I find useful. I think this is really great because I spend a lot of time on the KSP Wiki looking up bodies in Kerbal Space Program to get information like, let's resume the flight, like, you know, well, uh, what is their, you know, uh, GM, which is that gravitational, universal gravitational parameter, and uh, numbers like this, their rotation periods and their orbital periods and things like that. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy and we're going to push him up to just over 60 kilometers, and then we're going to get started on some other things. So I'm just going to lock this onto prograde, it's spinning itself around very slowly. We're going to have to bring up some more fuel for this so we can push this into a polar orbit. That's the eventual plan. 
I wish I was thinking about it a little bit more thoroughly before I just kind of left it in whatever orbit it's in. But we'll get to it. Alright. And is the engine active? The engine is active. So once this is locked prograde, we'll just we'll just do it. Alright, and this isn't gonna be too much, like we're already at apoapsis of 51 kilometers, so we're just gonna push it up ever so slightly. I must have my thrust limiter way down. There goes 61 kilometers. Oh no, I just don't have a lot of thrust. Okay, and uh, let's get up there to prograde. Actually, make sure that solar panel is okay. I'm just going to roll this a little bit. That should be good. Get up there to apoapsis, like a barely, but then I'm going to get some scientists here. We'll get some more science. It does not tell you what biomes you have completed, Eric is asking in the chat. That uh, it just tells you how many you have done. And we are about a minute from Apoapsis. We'll spin this around prograde once again. And while this is getting itself there, I'm going to take this opportunity to welcome. Or first of all, thank my Patreon patrons and YouTube members who helped to support this channel. And in particular, I want to thank my two newest members who joined in the last week, Jelly Be Good and Eric Nilsson. Thank you very much. Your support is greatly appreciated. Uh, I'm being asked what would be a safe orbiting distance uh, for the moon? Well... That's what, uh, if I go over to here, sorry to map view, asked in the chat, uh, the maximum elevation is just over seven kilometers. So if you are above that, then you're not gonna hit anything as you orbit. I would probably not cut it quite that fine. <laughs> uh, that's, that's just me. Okay, let's push this a little bit further. So again, just burning a little bit. You can see a little bit of the exhaust there. Again, just putting it in high space. And then at some point in the future, we'll... Uh, we'll get this into a polar orbit at some point. I'm just going to... I um, can tell right away I'm rolling it the wrong way. Again, I'm thinking there's only this one itty bitty solar panel on this. I'm not quite sure why. I uh, was so skimpy with the solar panel. So I just want to roll this a little bit more so that when this thing is on the light side, that solar panel, the last thing I want is for this thing to be running out of electric charge on me all right all right that's looking pretty decent quick time warp just to sort of freeze it there okay but i do have people probably remember from last week I do have still some Kerbals in space that are due to come back down. They are at the Minmus Gateway, which is in low orbit about Kerbin. So we're going to go down, we're going to go to that. We're going to get those Kerbals down to the surface, and then we'll get going with our mission to that asteroid. Oh dear. Nice black sky again. Here we are. Okay, uh, let's time warp so we have some daylight. There we go. So this is uh, our crew of four here, Michael, Bill, Hector, and Legee, who have been returning from Mimmus. They were our last Kerbals to finish off landing in the last of the biomes about Mimmus. I'm going to shut down this engine. They just got to get down to the surface. So we're going to transfer them. I believe they're just sitting still in here. Yep. Transfer them over to our little... What did I, I think I called this thing the Puff 2, if I'm not mistaken. But our little space plane here. 
The other thing I'm going to do, because I'm going to have to get another crew up to head towards that asteroid around the moon, I'm going to take another shot at flying my SSTO. I haven't flown it for a few streams. The last time I flew it, it kind of went, didn't go very well. So I think, I think everybody is in here. Now I want to check, make sure they're, they're about to go into the atmosphere. Let's get rid of this. Um, I want to make sure they got parachutes. So invent, oh no, inventory. Okay, we can, they got too much stuff here. Let's see. Um, and then here are these two guys. So there's an, this. Uh, let's put the repair kits. Do I have an actual storage? Con oh, here are storage containers right here on the other side of this. That's a good spot for them. Put these repair kits away. No reason. Oh, it's too much volume. One of these other ones. Wow, that one's full. Never realized I brought up so much stuff. That okay? Maybe in here. What's in here for inventory? More parachutes. Okay, we'll put a parachute over here. Repair kits come this way. <laughs> parachute this way. Whatever these are, probably struts. But noticing the pictures for the struts sometimes disappear. Okay, and okay, so these two have parachutes. Let's open up here. Uh, ba -bum -bum -bum. Where are they? Michael and Bill. Michael needs a parachute. Inventory, what's in here? More, how do we have so many parachutes? I have five parachutes. Okay, fine, we're gonna bring down the extra parachutes. <laughs> no idea why we got so many parachutes. All right, and open up TAC Fuel Balancer. Do a little bit of resource uh, Making sure they're okay for, for stuff, uh, like food. Which, 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 so many content, here it is. They are this, so they got 80% full food supply, so that'll be fine. Uh, liquid fuel they don't use, nitrogen. Again, they got a ton of nitrogen. Oxygen, they're at 86% of their oxygen supply. Monopropellant, this is ship number five. They're at, oh my god, 100%? Wow. They just don't need that. What if I started pumping some of this out? Yeah, we'll pump it all out. Yep, yeah, fine. Okay. Uh, I just filled up all the rest of the monopropellants. They don't need that much. They're just coming down to the surface. They do use it for propellant, like main propellant for the main engines, but they don't need that much. Uh, solid fuel, waste atmosphere, water. Just don't want to flaunt met. Okay, they're at 72% of their water. They're all fine. Okay. So they're ready to come down. And science! Can't forget science. Transfer data here. We'll just make sure that their science is where we want it to be. They got precious surface samples coming down from the surface of Minmus. They are all in here. Goody, good, good. Um, people were mentioning before when I was having trouble carrying all the science that I should upgrade the capacity. Um, I went and checked in the VAB and actually the capacity of this vessel had already been upgraded sometime in the past. That one that was skimpy must have been a really, really old one. Okay, so, um, let's get it down to the surface. Where are we at here? So, we are going here to, okay, we're going to again time warp for no other purpose than to land in the daylight. So, I don't like landing at night. You can see my two stations going round and round. You know, I'm realizing both these two stations are at very similar altitudes of about 120 kilometers but different inclinations which means their orbits do cross and uh, they're going to be meet they, they have the potential to meet each other at speed now i think in kerbal space program that's not a really big deal but i think in real life you would never do this like this is just asking for a disaster right here but anyway we're in Kerbal Space Program, not real life. So let's get to... I'm going to do my descent burn starting about here. 
So we'll get ourselves about half an or, or oh, we're already past half an orbit. Okay, let's let's detach and go. Let's detach and go. So undock. And RCS, if we control from here, it should be just an end back away. Uh, is it no it's five I think did, did, no uh, I, I forget my own action groups where's the action group editor what's the action group that gets it's one okay fine the only reason I want to use an action group because it also toggles off these blinky lights in fact they just turn them on oh my Uh, I get complaints about too many blinky lights. I don't know about other people. I like blinky lights, but some people seem to not like my blinky lights. Okay. I think I just turned them off and on again. Lights off. There we go. Okay. Uh, so, we're going to do... Toggle on the torque. Control. Toggle torque. Point it prograde. How on earth? Oh, because I'm still controlling from the... I'll get this eventually. <laughs> Control from here. There we go. And again, this is just going to be our avoidance maneuver. I'm just going to use RCS. Push up our apple lapses just a little bit. That should be enough. We'll roll this so it looks good. And in that way, we'll be going, uh, the station will end up being behind us so that when we go to do our retrograde burn, everything is good. Oh no, the station will be ahead of us. Sorry. Where is my download? Burning prograde slows you down. The lovely counterintuitiveness of orbital mechanics. Alright, there we go. Oh, and we'll put on, put this on retrograde, and turn on tack fuel balancer. We're going to target the KSC, we're going right for the runway. Our descent profile is going to be a forward prograde orientation, 45, I don't know, 30. I always guess that these numbers doesn't make a huge difference. Put 19, sure, why not? There we go. <laughs> Keep that info up there because it's really useful. Is it on? Nope, show trajectory. Okay. And I don't think I have my engines on. And it's going to be interesting to click on them. That's one. Activate the engine. Activate the engine. Okay. We'll watch from out here. So the KSC is right here by this waypoint. Maybe I should explain explain the waypoint in just a second. Might get rid of it actually. Oh, you know what I forgot to think about? Oh dear. We'll see how this goes. I forgot to realize I'm in an inclined orbit. I should have time warped to the point where the KSC was underneath my orbit. So we're going to end up coming significantly north of the KSC. I do not know if I have the, well, you know what? We got a lot of fuel. I can burn, I can burn that way. We can do this. I was about to say, I don't know if it has the cross range capability to do that in Atmo, but we're going to do this just this way. We're just going to burn. Well, I should have waited until the KSC was under my orbit. So we'll go this way. We don't need this fuel once we're, uh, so this is pretty expensive doing this, but oh well. <laughs> oh, I'm seeing in the chat, time to test the cross range. I don't think this thing has the cross range, so I'm I'm cheating it. We have a lot of extra fuel. We might. Oh, we're going to run out. You know what? Let's go retrograde. Let's not take all the fuel out. Yeah. 
And anti-normal again. I'll use up the rest of this fuel. We have 15 meters per second of monopropellant left, and then this thing will be empty. We should be able to. We can make. We can make up this gap. Oh yeah, easy. Here, that's good enough. All right. I don't like this blackness, but as soon as the sun comes up, it'll disappear. There we go. Oh, we're in the atmosphere. Let's get ourselves ready. Put it onto here. Uh, change the view to free. Find that works best. Okay, we're good. We're good. Uh, you can see the little red circle here, the tack or not tack, trajectories is putting on here is telling me uh, I'm coming towards the north so I'm going to actually I think I need to come this way to pull that red circle this way yeah so we're just gonna come in a bit of an angle like this I'm doing a bit of a bit of everything here there we go that should be bringing this number on oh, let's bring in that number up I am pointing the wrong way. Right, it is this way. I don't know why I find I get that backwards all the time. I'm looking at this number here, which is telling me the KSC is going to be south of us, and we're now bringing that number down, which is the point. So we won't be six kilometers from the KSC, and by the time we're there, we should be fine. I'll give us even a little bit of time warping. You think the red circle is actually the target? Man, that could be right. That actually makes some sense. But it's, I don't know. Now I can see it going up. Oh, that's because I'm coming. Yes, I need to come this way now. I'm coming significantly. Yeah, this is the way you got to pull. You got to, no, that's, I don't know. Whatever. I'm all of a sudden noticing I was coming significantly short too. As I was pitched too steeply. So I'm uh, pitching downwards towards the horizon to uh, drag out my glide. Of course, the fact that I'm going on an angle actually increases glide too, or decreases the glide. Okay, I'm gonna come this way now. We're, we're pretty much, we're good, we're good, we're good. There we go. <laughs> All good, there we are. Now we can actually start coming this way a bit. Excellent. Everything's good. I, I I spend it. I look at these numbers up here. That's what I find helps me. With the goal of the north south number being as close to zero as I can, and the I'm actually overshooting. I want to undershoot just a little bit. There we go. That went that went fairly effortlessly. And a quick save is a good idea. Always a good idea. I can show my him impact marker using... I don't know if I can see it down there. It's telling me where I'm going to hit. It doesn't matter. I don't need it. coming a little to the south. Whoa, whoa, come back here. Overshooting a bit. There we go. Oh, I'm still time warping. That's why everything feels so jittery. It's like everything feels so jittery. It's still in time warp. Okay, we're pretty much stalling here, so I think I'm just going to point and shoot, as it were. I think we can get rid of this. Get down there. I prefer to sort of undershoot a bit. Though overshooting is actually safer because if you overshoot the runway, you just land in the water. We're good now. The thing with this plane, it's so small and fairly light. Like I think it's mass to lift ratio, if that's a number, is... Uh, is fairly low so it stalls very quickly 
You can even see now I'm pointing straight down, yet I'm still slowing down. We're subsonic. All right. Someone's saying quick save? Sure, quick save. Always a good idea to quick save ahead of a, a landing. So that's when things go wrong. Then we're going to go into research and development, and we're going to spend some of this science that I've been collecting. I mean, I got... Where's the... Okay, maybe... I, there we go. 900 science plus whatever these folks are carrying. Oh, I have my little dot. I don't want that dot. That, that unnerves me. Okay, gear. 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 Dang, dang it. A little quickly. That slows you down pretty fast. <laughs> okay, a little bit of a flare up here at the end and there we go. Well done, Michael. All right. And recover. Okay. Again, I want to keep the number of part mods that I install to a minimum. I don't want my vessels to stray too far from what you could just build in stock in stock. Okay, so that's 210 science from the samples that they brought back. So we'll that's okie dokie. So we're at 1,000. 1,110 science. So into research research and development we go. And I actually wrote down. Let me get my my whiteboard here. Uh, what I was looking at. <laughs> as I, I scouted this all ahead of time and I was thinking like there's some tempting ones to go for like for instance nuclear power with its fission reaction that or fission reactor that is really tempting but I'm not ready that's going to be for a surface moon base uh, that is really tempting and also down here yeah right here a uh, short-term habitation which has a greenhouse and a gravity ring that is definitely something I want to work my way towards. But again, I kind of want to go for things that are a little bit more needed right now. So what I am looking at is, let's see here. We have advanced exploration um, with more scanning tools and stuff like that. Uh, the big ladder, like I haven't unlocked the big ladder yet. Like what's wrong with me? Some uh, EVA propellant tools, some cargo containers. That's a nice one. And I'm looking at the one right after that as well, scanning tech um, with more smart parts, but again, resource scanners, these valves, infrared telescope, oh, we can fire that off. Uh, scanning arms for, I want to build a rover and do some resource scanning with the scanning arm. There we go. That is good. And then what I'm also looking up here at composites, because what I really want in composites, I mean, there's lots of good little parts, but the Clampatron Senior. That's the thing I really, 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 really do want. So we're going to click on the Clampatron Senior right there. And I also have here, uh, which one was I looking at? I think it was Field Science, maybe? Field Science, I have written down. Uh, external Command Seat, a lot of good rover wheels. Again, more science tool. Underwater, haven't done that yet, but might be fun to do. Uh, and storage, extra storage capacities, upgrade. Okay, so let's get that. That leaves me with only 50 science, so there we go. That is it. And this also adds a whole bunch of science experiments to crew compartments and other things as well. You can see them being added here. These are all coming from Kerbalism. I'm going to have to explore those at a later date.